What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? We are back. It's Lee Gunlock, Eric, and Mark here with you, beauties, as we gear up for a return to Week 5 action in the LCS. A week off, which means teams have had time to look inwards and reflect, especially squads like Cloud9, who maybe are revisiting all these preseason teasers and other teams saying Cloud9's the team to beat. JoJo to C9, that's the biggest offseason move. Everyone talking about Cloud9. And now here they sit, 4-5. and five. One game ahead of bottom, 8th place, not even making playoffs. And this, in the penultimate regular season week, is their chance to bounce back, Mark. I've yet to decide what mixture of the league is actually not having anybody that is a major dropout, major drag down type of situation is either good or bad. Either we've got a bunch of bad teams, probably pretty true. We've also got some teams that have got some upsides and some skills to see them, which is also, I'll say, true in this situation of the LCS and Cloud9, you better believe, is one of those squads finding themselves right in the thick of it in the picture for the LCS. And this weekend, as we're going to lay out, Make or break. I'll call it right now for the spring split for the C9 squad. Yeah. Third to eighth is separated by a grand total of two games. I think instead of having a few terrible teams, we've got a a good chunk of mediocre teams. That's what the LCS (laughs) is rocking heading into this year. But big schedule, not just in terms of there's only four games left, but Cloud9 going up against FlyQuest, who are obviously at the top of the table, and Team Liquid, who they also had maybe one of the worst losses they've had uh, earlier in the week. So a double shot at redemption, getting revenge against these two squads. You remember that first FlyQuest matchup? It was Masu and Busio, not once, but twice. 2v2 double killing the bot lane of Berserker and Vulcan. So that is pinpoint number one you got to look at in this matchup. I think Volk, uh, you know, looking at that one, Berserker deserves, you know, relative fair share of the blame for that not going the way and the, and the poor execution on the poor decision making in that one when you're looking at how things went so wrong so quickly for Cloud9 against FlyQuest. But individually, I'm looking much more so at Vulcan. We've talked about this with this duo for Cloud9, not necessarily, you know, there's obviously a lot of other things not going right, but really focusing in on that bottom lane, not necessarily providing that type of firepower we know they should be able to at the LCS level. Vulcan individually, since he has joined Cloud9, I don't think we've seen him at his very best, either in lane or creatively outside the lane for the rest of C9. That's something I'm hoping we saw some improvements on coming out of this long break. And Cloud9 is such a strange team right now. And a perfect example of the overall level of the LCS maybe being higher from top to bottom, they have the highest gold differential at 15. JoJo and Berserker have the best CS numbers Uh, at 15 of their respective roles it's kind of that post 15 the communication the macro for cloud nine i feel like this squad a squad like this is used to just bullying their way through laning phase to a i mean honestly domestic title but the rest of the league is a little bit better and they're not able to just kind of ham fist force their way to wins And I think this shows that there's a weakness in as far as the communication, the chemistry and leadership that goes on for this team. When you get to that point, having a clear understanding of who's making the call, who is the ultimate one that is going to be that ride or die type of shot call in the situation hasn't quite really emerged going through some of these comms. It is a little bit mixed up. They're on different pages at times. And that is sure that's going to happen with any type of squad. But right now with Cloud9, as you've laid out, they've been so good early that the fact that they're struggling once you get to that 15 minutes and onwards point, that's where you start to question a lot of those decisions, a lot of that execution in those later parts of the game. And obviously not fully going to be able to judge this team till we get to those best ofs, but If they don't show something this week, uh, I mean, two games isn't enough for me to have confidence that they're just going to be able to turn it around uh, going into the best of. So the journey back to the top of the table has got to start this weekend for C9. I think with Cloud9, there's no doubt that heading into a best of type of situation, you can see them getting a win, right? They can see them making this type of push in this type of moment. But it's really hard to look at this Cloud9 team and see the consistency required to get through multiple best of series to end up as that spring champion at this point. 
Same record as them. Defending champions NRG seem like they have an even bigger road to climb because they've lost that last head-to-head against Cloud9 in the rematch. They have the longest losing streak in the LCS. And this is a team that, even though they won spring or won summer last year, it feels like they still have to reprove themselves. And four and five, four-game losing streak isn't the way to do it. They've got a slightly easier schedule against Dig and Team Liquid, but this isn't just a dig that's going to roll over and get beaten down. So, NRG, how do we see things turn around for them? I, I can't believe that we're talking about a team even more desperate for the break to have hit and, and the Cloud9. NRG, as you laid out, that losing streak absolutely wanted that time. I think they even laid it out for us. It was going to be about two days off, two days of actual little break, rest type of stuff like that, recharge. And then the rest of it is going to be screwing, getting to work, making sure we're ready for when we're back into LCS action. This NRG team, we have seen a little bit of those sparkles, a little bit of those glimpses of the team that was able to capture that summer title, best C9 in that best of series, and make their way to the top eight of the world championship. We've also seen a lot of the slip-ups, a lot of the sloppy play for this NRG team, a lot of the questions I think a lot of people rightfully had of whether they'd be able to repeat it this year now i do believe we are going to see that at championship nrg form throughout this year are we going to get to that peak in spring is the question this week just like cloud nine these are very vital games to set yourself on that path right before playoffs and we're case in point 2024 getting locked into a new live patch for the lcs as things go we saw I hardly even call them Cassante nerfs. Tweaks, we'll call them. We'll see if that's going to shake up the top lane. But that is the added caveat and mystery of any given week is you got to automatically adapt on the fly to new changes to the game. I feel like trying to fix Cassante at this point is one of those ones where you're, you got to screw, you got to screw in. And you're grabbing what is clearly the wrong screwdriver head and you're still screwing it in and it's not making any progress and you then just another go back. screw pops out on the other end and you go oh and you go yeah but i was you know i was <laughs> screwing down for like an hour or so it's gotta work this time it's not working guys come on i mean we can argue about that we can argue about freak getting a couple more buffs hopefully in there eventually but yes 14.4 is hitting and you know what lcs we always know live patch that's going to create some strange reactions we've seen teams go from the precautionary ban everything out we don't even want to see it to last week seeing last time we played seeing a little bit more peek through a little bit of smolder action coming in i hope we're going to get to see a little bit more new stuff as well Sure, he's going to be featured even more, and I feel like we're only seeing the beginnings of this twisted fate being flexed in three different roles, tinkering his AD ratios a little bit, which or his AP ones, which means it's going to be even more AD TFs coming this week. Best, best believe it's not just tactical that is going to be that LCS twisted fate. We're going to see all sorts of twisted fate in the LCS. Call up Kickus because we might be seeing him in the jungle even this week. Who knows? <laughs> Hey, I I really don't think he's all that far off from being a possibility there. Of course, the numbers are all there and what his kit provides and how it changes the game for your team. Always an option that should be kept in your mind. They might not be on the live patch over in the LCK, but we got Mr. Showmaker who's saying, I'm trying to change the meta, not with a new pick but with the new build, because even he is getting bored of the Azir in the mid lane. He says, how do I spice this up against some AD comps on the other side? We're seeing my man pull out the frozen heart and go and tank Azir, and he picks up double MVPs in a 2-0 sweep doing it. I want to know, is this, actually, is this actually a more spicy build for Azir, or is this just a more mild? Is this like the sour cream type of build? For Azir, where it just mellows things out. You're, you're tanky, you've got more life, you everything else like that. It's not as explosive, not as a big hitter as the damage, but you know what? The hits were still strong enough for this DK team on the day. And yes, Showmaker showing us that that Azir, it can live a heck of a lot longer. He's gonna take a heck of a lot longer to take people down. And so that's an interesting equation on how that's working out, but it certainly did work out in the favor 
of damn one key. It might take him 15 auto attacks to kill a support Maokai, but it's going to take someone else 25 auto attacks to take down uh, this tank Azir. And I mean, if this is the mild version of an already mild pick, I mean, that's like you're putting pepper on something. And, whoa, whoa, a little too spicy for me. Oh, well, if that's too spicy, how about game two? And you get aiming on the Varus, making sure that that damage is at that peak front, is that spiciness. That's something that is important for me, keeping track of the heat level of D plus Kia, because we've seen, you know, obviously multiple fluctuations with this team, and we know that that's going to be the case with what you're going to have with Lucid replacing a mainstay in Canyon in the jungle, all these other factors as well. But that bottom lane and aiming's performance individually is something you got to keep track of what, how it's flowing at the point. Right now, we're looking like we're back on that rise, which is where you got to look out for D plus Kia being hot. Yeah, it was honestly almost a must-win scenario matching up with the same record Fox squad at 3-5. and five. And for me, this series just now pretty much fully cements D plus as that playoff gatekeeper. Maybe they've taken the mantle over from a squad like the Afrika Freaks, now Kwang Gong Freaks, as we're not quite top five worthy, but we're a little bit better than the rest of these playoff squads over in the LCK. Yeah, I think that's the the comfort zone that I'll, I'll slide a squad like D plus Kia into at this point. What we've seen from Showmaker, how aiming has been able to play, the rest of the, the squad is really going to have to find that way to solidify, get that consistency is the big thing for us week in, week out with this squad. Better than Fear X, but are they going to be able to challenge a squad like the Kwangdong Freaks ahead of them in that situation? And they got to work on not letting it Sejuani just stand in Oof. between four of them and stealing a Baron. It honestly looked like he had a disguise on, like he had the D-plus tag, and they were like, oh, okay, great, he's on our team, cool. Yeah, I've, I've almost never seen that in solo queue Rude. type of stuff as well. It is straight up... I. You almost want to get the players tested for colorblindness at that <laughs> point because there has to have been some type of recognition that, wait a minute, Wait a minute, this One, is not two, the three, four, five, six, <laughs> six of them. Wait a sec. Oh, they took the Baron. Yeah, that was terrible, but they still come away with the 2-0 and D-plus slowly getting back on the right foot. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, a beautiful people. As always, thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.